righty, welcome into, I guess we're going to call it analytics versus experience. We've got Chad Grimley, Chuck Grimley, say hi. Hello, everybody. The Hello. ever magnificent Larry Boa. What's up, Mitch? And my partner on Unleashed, Ray Shipione. I'm Mitch Williams, and we are here to discuss the 2008 Phillies versus the 1980 Phillies and which team was more talented. I have my opinion. Obviously, they have theirs. I'm going to turn it over to Chuck. Chuck, you can get us rolling. Yeah, thanks, Mitch. Before we dive into that, we just want to uh, just add a few things, too, that I, I was lucky enough to spend uh, a lot of years watching both you guys play. Uh, and I just want to kind of footnote a couple things about this guy on my left here, Larry Boa. Uh, overall, fantastic player, but his great defensive shortstops go. Last time we met, I, I gave you a couple of these, and I think you <laughs> thought I was making them up. But just got to hear this. I'll just give you a couple so we don't bore everybody with a lot of data. But <clears throat> Larry had 6,857 assists in his career. That's a lot of coverage. Oh, yeah. He did that in 16 years. Here's the cool part of that stat. No other shortstop ever accumulated that many assists in 16 years. And it took Derek Jeter 20 seasons to accomplish 200 less so, Bo, you had an awful lot of coverage. Uh, the, if you take your number of years played, 16, and just divide by your assists, because a lot right. of people call analytics inappropriately, where it's just stats, right. common right. sense. This isn't an analytic. This right. is a, it, analytics, as we could agree, is how you use statistics. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's just a stat. Right. It's face value. Mm -hmm. If you take the 16 by his number of assists, the only two shortstops to ever average more assists per year was Ozzy and Luis Aparicio, which, I mean, uh, ha hats off. That's you know what? I, I didn't know that stat, but and, and the guy that I used to watch when I was growing up was Louis Aparicio sure. because he was small. He wasn't a very was big small. guy. Him and Nellie Fox were the, the keystone combo, but I used to watch them a lot. Yeah, and I want to get back to that in a second. Just to complete this, um, Bo had 843 chances one year. Now, if you get into this stuff, which a lot of people don't, my wife thinks I'm, I'm, I'm nuts. For I'm with her. <laughs> going to bed at night with the stats and leave it at that. But you, you, you're able to mine this stuff, and it, if you like it, it's fascinating. But one year, uh, Bo had 843 chances. That's Ozzy Smith. Ozzy Smith had 900 once. He had 800 a handful of times, and it was six and seven. 843 chances. And that is absolutely Hall of Fame defensive level number. That's just absolutely unprecedented. Eleventh uh, all time in double plays with twelve hundred and sixty five. So you may think I was going to stop on just a lot of defensive accomplishments, right? But and I twenty seven hundred hits, I believe. Uh, that, uh, that was Jeter. Uh, that was yeah, Jeter yeah, yeah, calling yeah, yeah. to complain <laughs> that. Uh, <laughs> that's right, that's, that's, right. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, Jeter's that's on the was. phone. <laughs> yeah, but. We're not going to stop on defense because, you know, everybody talks about, well, how'd the guy do in postseason? Look at Barry Bonds. Look at right. a lot mm -hmm. of players that don't deliver in <coughs> postseason, okay? But before we come back to my questions to how you achieve that, Bo, because you mentioned the height before Cal Ripken's and taller shirts. Right. In the World Series, uh, and I think you probably do know this, you batted 375 against Kansas City with a 792. Oh, that's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, uh, that uh, 375 when it counts against Kansas City, you had to feel really good I, about that. I did feel good about that. And, you know, looking back on that, Schmidt came up in one game in the eighth inning and hit a double. And I was told by Tom Seaver and the guys doing that, that if he didn't get that hit, I was going to be the most valuable player of yeah, the World Series. That. But, I remember you know, Schmidt got the big hit, not only there, but yeah. obviously in Montreal to get us to where we wanted to go. But uh, I didn't even think about that, you know, right. that stuff, because – you know, the ultimate goal is winning the World Series. You always approach and, it that and way. And we were close so many times, and then finally getting over the hump was something that you, you never forget. I yeah. can tell you for a fact, the guy sitting to your left doesn't care one bit about stats. Not one I know having him as a coach, bit. being a friend of his, winning. Right. That's all how you're measured. It doesn't matter. Do you want living proof? We had lunch a while back. I did this thing way back, maybe 15 years ago article the editor about boa deserves hall of fame consideration i brought it with me i never thought i'd see in person and right. but it was nice enough to sign it so i had a few copies made <laughs> it is just funny i didn't take this personal and it went into all stats versus rizzuto and everybody else that's in the hall 
it was fairly well written, if I may say so. Then we get up to go, and Bo left it there. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't I care about to, stats. I don't, I don't need to take but, something home that's about my, I, own, my you, own stats. I am going to take that. I didn't know any of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, this is, this is unbelievable. And I want to ask you, uh, you know, we always talk about size, leverage. Right. You know, all that stuff does translate. We know that. Try fighting a boxer that's really good at 6'6 six, six versus 5'6. So good luck with that. How did you do it? Because you also had a third baseman, Hall of Fame third baseman, that had to take – his share of balls away from you out of that. No question. I, in fact, so I did a show a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about defense, and I said people don't understand that when you have a Hall of Fame third baseman, and I knew Schmidt could go to his left as good as anybody I have ever seen. So as a, as a shortstop, I didn't have anybody have to tell me, hey, Bo, you might want to cheat a little bit up the middle because any ball that's not hit real hard, Schmidt is going to get it. And, you know, we start working that way. And, and – not only do you have a Hall of Fame guy at third, I brought up the point, the Oakland A's have a, a, a future Hall of Famer at third base, Chapman, and a future Hall of Famer, the first baseman, but they're also gold glove winners. Mm -hmm. And how many times do you hear people say, oh, put this guy at first base, don't worry about it. First baseman handled the ball more than anybody but catchers right. Everybody. Right. So Ryan, you, Ryan Howard could not catch the well, baseball with one or hand. Or throw it. Couldn't right. throw it to second. He couldn't catch with one hand. And the – that, yeah, that absolutely crazy. hinders you as a first baseman because you can't stretch. Hey, the we couldn't way. do that in girls' softball, right? No. Competitive softball. No. Right. Hey, well, can't you just put my daughter at first? Uh, your daughter's a DH. They tell you that. That's what I couldn't understand. Why, why did Ryan not get that. another chance and to you, DH somewhere? You know what's amazing, Mitch? Is is that <laughs> when I went back to the Phillies as coach, so they, that was a big deal. Work with with Howie at first base. So we'd go on that half field. Every day, you can ask John Cruck about the half field. I buried him on that. Oh, yeah. But the thing about, <laughs> the, the thing about Howie, he did it on the half field. Mm -hmm. One hand, I said, oh, this is great. As soon as we got on the field and the, they opened the gates, he, had no he goes back. You try to catch a ball with both hands out here, you lose your balance. Exactly. That's the same thing yeah. on a fly ball. When the ball's hit like this, to your right, you, stretch you, you do yeah. it one-handed. You don't get both You're hands. And, and, and it's coming at 90 miles an <laughs> hour. That's one like, of the myths. Well, short and Jeff, too. The one, of the, one of the reach. myths yeah. that gets perpetrated in baseball, catching the ball with two hands. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Somebody well, that catches a ball with two hands tells me they have no confidence in their glove hand. It blocks mm -hmm. your vision. If you're in the outfield or if you're and catching a pop-up in the infield and you put it up, it blocks your vision of the ball. There is no reason – and you, you can't keep hands. your balance. No, you can't. We can't keep your balance. No, exactly. It's right. unbelievable. Yeah, if you're but, making but, a tag, you're, and you're trying know, to bring your meat in. Now, with the, how much get, further you get restricted on the absolutely. tag with two hands. No question. Me. You know, get, getting back to your question, uh, I, I think the one thing that helped me more than anything is that my dad taught me the game. And back when I played, the middle infielders, the center fielder, and the catcher, you guys do play defense. The corner guys, first, third, right, left, they're going to do all the damage at the plate. Right. And so that was a priority. And now the game has changed so much now that you look for offense at every position. And defense sort of goes by the wayside. I mean, they, they had these defensive stats now. Three years ago, uh, Jerko, Jed Jerko, do you know the third yeah. baseman? Yep. Yep. He was ranked right behind Arenado as the best defensive third baseman. I'm going – where, where are we getting these? Nothing against Jed. I've watched him play. Right. He's not. He, he might be at the bottom of the list defensively, but these these uh, stats are so are so skewed that you can't get a good read defensively. You know, and I just found out the other day that when when you have the shift on and the shortstop's on the other side of second right. for a left-handed hitter, and the guy trickles the ball to short. You get penalized because you weren't in that position, in even zone. though the coaches and the analytics say that's right. Three that's on the other side, you're, which you're that's entirely a joke. Correct. It falls under zone coverage. If, uh, if I was a pitcher on the mound, there is no way I would let the shift. I would I, turn turn around and position him. Yeah. I knew what I was throwing. <laughs> so pull the same crew, that's how it should. I be. love it's that. It's supposed to be like that. If, right. I, if I did it once when I was, you know, Aaron Nola, he he right. was our best pitcher during those times when we didn't have a lot. So, you know, we'd have the sheet, who to shift on, who not to shift. And I'd go up to him. I said, hey, I got two guys I'm going to shift on. What do you think? And he goes, I don't want you to do it on this guy. You can do it on that guy. And, and I let him do it. He's a pitcher. Yeah. A pitcher knows. A pitcher knows what his stuff is. Just like Zach Wheeler. He, he got burned about five times last year. He never comes out and says it, but I've been in the clubhouse now. He does not like the shift. I hate right. the shift. Right. I and hate you, know, the you get a guy that has an idea what he's doing with the baseball and throws hard. 
I don't want to shift. I, no. I, I mean, come on. Which takes us back to, I, I saw you walk in today, and, and you're taller than I always thought, but you're not 6'6". Six, six. Well, how did you get to this many balls per year? W were you I, doing your own shifts before yes. shifts? Oh, yeah. You I, knew I, the batters. You knew pre pitch the pitch positioning. Right? You could trust Carlton. You know, Carlton no, was going to throw a pitch. And, Carl, and I knew, be, right? uh, with that slider, that left hand, when right-handers faced him, there's no way they're hitting balls up the middle. Right. No. There's no way. No way. You're going to get the head out. You're going to cheat to get a, a slider. Well, did, did you flash your teammates like they do now with, with, with pitches coming? Well, we Maddox we did, okay. the center fielder, because okay. he, was, he was unbelievable. Oh, yeah. But, but the, thing about, the thing about analytics is it's, it's their way or the highway, right. and it, there's no gray area. It's, it's just it's abuse, it's of, it. It's it, abuse it of it. It is. And, and, and yeah. It's laziness is what it comes down Chuck. to. You know, we, we, you know, we had – basically, we did have analytics. We had spray charts, right. and we, we'd look at the spray charts. I don't need someone upstairs that never put on a uniform say, hey, make sure you're on the – I would read swings. I try to get our minor league system – I go down with the minor leaguers, and in low A and maybe up to double A, let these guys play. Let That's them right. learn how to read swings. Let them play according to the count. Let them play according to who's pitching. A guy's throwing 95. Another guy's throwing 89. Right. The middle of the order, 3-4-5, when the count's 3-0 and or 2-0, and they're going to try to jerk the ball. A singles hitter, when he gets two strikes, he's going to go the other way. You don't need analytics to tell you that. If you play baseball long enough and watch the game, they're going to dictate how you play, and you're going to be able to read swings. But We've gotten all away from that because we've taken responsibility off players, and they're going to say, hey, he told me to play there. But did you see something in the swing? Yeah, but he told me to play there. There are so, so many pitchers in this league today that have no idea where, where the head of the bat is. None. When a hitter's hitting and fouls a ball off, they don't know. If a guy fouls a ball straight back, he's late. Yeah, they think a lot of people they think, think it, oh, they're on me. No, they're he's not dead on, on it. Yeah, he's, he's, he's on. behind you. Yeah. Right. He's late, but right. pitchers can't recognize where the barrel is in the zone when the pitch crosses the plate, and that's a problem. Well, how about this, Mitch? I, I, as hard as you threw, I mean, that gun when he pitched, it would be Seven, prob probably so. 99 to 101, 102, because they, they first of all they time it differently now. Right. But when you pitch, you could read a swing. Yes. C catchers used to Can read. Can you swings. clarify that, uh, Bo? Uh, differently now well there's going to be people going to hear that and say what does he mean okay w when when mitch pitched they clocked that thing when it crossed home plate right. now they clock it as soon as it leaves their hand right. and scientists have done it it is seven, they did the math it is seven miles an hour faster oh, than that. the ray gun yeah, you're gonna tell me nolan ryan and, and even guys like mitch they're not going to be 99 to 100 right. mitch right. I, I seen chapman and i seen him he threw he threw his hardest chap. That's a lofty compliment. No, I'm serious. I watched I, 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 that's it. That's and, cool. and but but the, the readings are going to be different because the gun's different. Yeah. And mm -hmm. now we're all enamored with velocity, but they can't throw strikes. So what good is it? You know, I'm talking about starting pitching. Not only us, but the industry signing guys. Oh, he throws 97 to 98. Okay, that's good. These guys will turn around a freight train if it's 30, 20, 31. Right. They know a fastball's coming. It doesn't yep. matter. It's, it's about quality pitches right, and exactly. hitting the corners, keeping a hitter off balance. But now it's all about velo. we got to sign him. And if we don't, we're going to miss out. Well, you know, I've seen a lot of guys throw hard and can't get anybody out. We saw that in Tri-County. That was the last level Chad and I were together on Chad Fight. I was coaching. And you had pitchers. It was, a, it was a summer league for the college pitchers. A lot of them were just throwing flat fastballs at one. Uh, uh -huh. And getting bombed. Sure. And you sit there and you go, boy, that looks – about how fast 92 looked the first time yeah. you saw it. You know, it was harder to bunt. He, he was terrific. Well, but, but we didn't have any action on it. No. They, they weren't located. You're just throwing a flat 92. And breaking it basketball. down even further, if you had the – the way they're teaching hitters to hit now. Oh, my God. The launch angle? Just, Please. There is no way that they can hit a ball. If you throw above 93 up here, yeah. because they're starting to – they don't start to launch once you make contact. Right. They're starting it back yep. here. Dropping down. Their they're barrel coming drop. straight up. And this ball in here, Unhittable. like the way he threw, right. th th that's why there's – that's why guys have 175, 180 strikeouts, and nobody thinks anything of oh it's it's okay it's a strikeout it's a strikeout so don't worry as about it. As much as I hate to move this along, this is fascinating, uh, and we could we'll come back to some of it. Speaking of how he threw the wild thing here, yeah. just want to gloss over some things here that I wasn't aware of, and maybe I'll catch Mitch not being aware of one or two of these things. I think he knows he holds the record for eight wins in one month uh, as a reliever, uh, and I know that you've pitched an awful lot of games your rookie year, eighty and stuff like that. So I want to find something you may not be aware of. 
Uh, and I know your bats in the Hall of Fame. For yeah. The hit you got it for. I could rake, couldn't I, Bo? Uh, that was at 4, what that, 4, 4 30 4 41, baby. And then we had a day game, didn't we? The next no, day it was a night game. Was it? I just want to know one thing. You get it, you get the win you hit at 4 41 a.m. Do you go out or you go home? No, my dad had just flown in from Oregon that oh, day. Oh, good story. Tell so us that. So he went to sleep in the truck. We, uh, the first game ended at 1 o'clock. <laughs> That's great stuff. We had a day game the next day. <laughs> was it a day game? Yeah, it was a su- that was a yeah. Saturday doubleheader. Yeah. And a lot of us stayed right. In fact, I know I stayed there. Me and right. Luke, yeah. we stayed in the clubhouse. Yeah, I could, I couldn't because my dad was there. Right. So, so you guys were right to bed. Uh, yeah, I stayed right there in the clubhouse okay. and laid down. No after, sleep, no after game celebration drink. No, we well, never. We, drink. Had, we had a couple. <laughs> we had a couple pops because we knew we weren't going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's great stuff. I was going to say, first thing he did was put a dip in <laughs> and <laughs> grabbed a beer. That's true. Yeah. yeah. No, no, okay. Beer. Nobody yeah. missed any of that. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so uh, anyway, the sorry. first game ended at one. And I went over to my father, and I said, look, the second game starts at 120. <laughs> he said, for you it does. He said, give me your keys. He said, because I had, a, like, a queen-size bed built into the back of my truck. Right. So he went out there and went to sleep, and I came out at, like, 6.15 in the morning. <laughs> That's hilarious. Got in the truck, and I said, he asked how I did. He was asleep. I said, ah, no big deal. I said, I got the win in the second game, and I got the game-winning hit. He said, no way. It was my only at bat that year. It was a rope. No. Wait a minute. Left Qu- center. Frozen line drive to the wall. Queen size bed in the back. I was, I, Did I, we just, you know, we I, went right yeah. over that? We, we, we were, well, no. what was that I can for? say no. that, oh, well, it was a kit. It was a kit. It was a kit. The middle section of it uh, sat down on the floor of the truck. Right? So oh, my okay. kids had benches yeah. back there and right. a TV and everything. So we're not going to say if those walls could talk or anything. Yeah, I was going to say. If those walls could talk. for the groupies? They've seen my dad asleep. Yeah. Pretty boring. All right, back to a stat that uh, so we, we uh, so maybe your name should have been Bulldog because this is the innings pitch for eight consecutive years, and this is remarkable. Uh, 80, 85, Bo, 67, 76, 59, 69, 66, 65 innings pitch. You just do straight math, no analytics, add it up, divide. Right. So for eight years, okay, I think it's 86 to 93. I could be off by a year or two. Yeah, you have you average seventy one appearances. So what it did, Mitch, uh, and this will surprise you. I went back to the leading relief pitchers of all time: Rivera, Franco, uh, Orozco, you name it. Brad Lidge, and nobody did that. I think until somebody shows me otherwise, I think for eight years you appeared in more games as reliever than anybody in the history of baseball. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and that's – and that's. Bo six. can tell you, though, only thing you can count on with me is I'd be ready to take the ball. Yeah. That's, it yeah. Didn't, and it didn't matter what happened the night before. Uh, <laughs> right. if, if, if he walked three then struck out three, or if he got three up and three down, if he threw 20 pitches or 32, he was available. The only and, three and up, three down I had that year was game six of the NLCS, I think, against Atlanta. At the end there? Yeah. The one that put us well, in the World, won, series, won yeah. the World Series. I think that was my only one, two, three. The one game. you jumped eight foot off the mound. Afterwards. No one knew I had that kind of leaping ability. <laughs> so well, it's you a know, great the, picture. The, the other thing that people, the, I think they realize it. In fact, a lot of our Mitch's teammates, not a lot of them, a couple of them. If if he didn't pitch that year the way he pitched, we don't even get to the World Series. You know, everyone talks about, oh, Mitch blew the World Series. You know, right. Mitch was on the mound when Carter hit the home run. Right. But yeah. We don't even get to the World Series. And, and you know what? Th- that's what's so good about this game. One person doesn't win it, and one person doesn't lose it. Exactly. And I think the more this thing evolves, people realize that they look back on it. Well, the other thing is he didn't make any excuses, which this sa- this town, this is the worst thing you can do is make excuses. Well, that's for oh, sure. Believe me. He came out and said, hey, I, I messed up. That's on me. Mm-hmm. I wish I could have that pitch back. I think you know, he would have been playing higher. We'd have been fine. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, we, we could do a four-hour podcast with these guys. Uh, Time just – it's, I, but I'm, I got to mention one final thing because he spoke when I when I coached we're at Ryder. Twenty five minutes at all. I know when, <laughs> when I coached at Ryder University, uh, Coach Boa came and spoke at our first pitch dinner. I never knew this guy never played high school, never started a game in high school. I didn't. I didn't make the team. That's the story he tells. No, I, that's any, even any more year, amazing. No, no. I got cut every year. So you're playing Legion ball? No, he played. I, I played yeah, le- summer I ball. I played Legion ball because it was a different right. manager. And then I was playing summer ball, and the junior college coach came out and said, hey, I'd like you to come out for my team. And I went, 
I didn't even make high school. How am I going to make your team? Right. He says, you come out, I'll give you every opportunity to play. And I went out, and I played two years there, and I made all-conference, and then the Phillies signed me, and then that, that was how that was went that down. At that point, was your skill set more defensive three? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's no question. Right. But but the excuse the, the high school kept, coach kept giving me was I was too small. Right. I, I, if he'd have said, you can't catch the ball, you, you're not a very good runner, you can't hit, yeah, tell you know, to I, I, I deal with all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when so, he tells me I'm too small, and this is well, this is one sport I try to tell all the kids, you don't have to be 6'5 to play this nope. game. Nope. And so that guy gave me a chance, and he's still living, Del Bandy. So imagine if he would have got a job after high school, like most guys back yeah. then. Let's say he just – would have got a job. There's a career. Yeah. I always I used to ask Mitch, is there guys out there that for whatever reason, you know, th- maybe they, they had a kid at 17. Is there guys out there that could have been great professionals that are just home sitting that we'll never uh, know about? Right, I'm you, sure know what right. that, you know what that great point dovetailed to right now is the fact that look what happened last year because of them reducing the budgets. Right. Now, Correct. There are guys, there's a local kid, just read the article, I want to say Dombrowski. I know that's wrong. But this is a kid that was at the double A that got a call up by St. Louis, but they didn't recall him last year because of the budget shrinkage and whatnot. Right. And this kid had a terrific ERA at like 24 years old. But now, he's, now he's getting too old. Sure, in the why not? And he's just hanging on right now. But the fact that they don't have the full oh. structure of baseball is I can t- us, t- you know, I can tell a you a, a, kids. Guy, a, a guy that played in triple A forever, Bono Lancelotti. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, this yeah. guy hit three, first 335. Base, first base, yeah. Basically. And hit 35 home runs every year. Yeah. Got a cup of coffee in the big leagues. That was it. And we just had a kid where I'm from, Hamilton. Um, he got released. He was uh, in between first, second round pick, signed for a million and a half out of high school. Um, he was released by the Angels after five years. And uh, he just signed a major league contract. Yeah. He but went. To, he went to these camps. Right. He went to a showcase. I told right. you about it. Right. Yeah. It, was, it was in all the papers. But and he got a major league contract. It's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, you take it a step further. The analytics now. If you have a three in, by your age, if it, as soon as you hit thirty, they think your your career's downhill. It's unbelievable. <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm serious. Yeah, That's what they believe in. Right. And you know, when we played thirty, man, hey, I'm I'm starting to feel it. I feel good. I, I'm going to start doing, making some hay here, making some money. But now, as soon as you hit 30, they go, nope, we've got to get rid of him. Let's bring this 22-year-old up. And, and I try to tell these parents that, that like to keep their kids back. You know, when, the, w- when you get in and you're a young, you know, four, 14 or 15, they keep their kids back. And, but I said, the scouts, no. The first thing they say when they look at your kid is he's an old, right. you know, he's an old graduate because right. they, they kept the kid back. They want him young. Yeah, That's they why do. they go in the Dominican Republic and sign them at 16. Well, my know? 16-year-old son is in that situation. Yeah. yeah he right. could be a uh, sophomore this year age-wise. Absolutely. But he's a junior. I, I was going to ask you why I didn't hold him back. <laughs> <laughs> I guess a couple coaches and, and former professional baseball players, I guess we could agree on best use of analytics, right? Yeah, yeah I th- there's some. Yeah, there, there are – it has its uses. Yes. But to rely on it right. no. is foolish. Right. All right, we're going to move it along here on your hot topics. Obviously, right. it's been a big week with the uh, the Eagles, and you guys are, are football fans. Huge fans. Everybody's yep. interested in your opinion. Mitch, why don't you lead us off? Everybody knows one down. Everybody knows what yeah. they're attributed to. Well, is Peter's this a quarterback a- issue? Is this a win now, five-year plan? Do you believe in what Lori said? Let's hear from you. I think that was a joke of a press conference. And – Doug Peterson got exactly what he wanted. Peterson was tired of all the crap going on here in Philly. He knew if he took that format of the coach he he wanted to keep into Lurie, he knew it was going to get him fired. So he's got two years on Lurie's dime that he ain't got to do nothing. He was talking this morning about taking a year off. There is no way in the world anyone will ever convince me, A, that Peters, Peterson wanted Wentz over Foles, there's no way you'll convince me of that. And I have been saying for three years that Doug doesn't like Carson. And it, the way everything's playing out, Chuck, I honestly think the guy that was the most honest through all of this was Jeffrey. All Sean Jeffrey. He came oh, out yeah. and said what everybody else in that locker room was thinking. He had the guts to say it. Wentz is not liked by that team. The best thing Lurie could do is trade him. 
And anybody that says that the Eagles offense looked better under Wentz than it did under Hurts doesn't know what they're looking at. And we, we called it on Monday. Yeah. We said at 11 a.m. he was getting fired. We said the reason is because he wants to start Hurts uh, and, and he's being – because you're a money guy. We, who's going to sit for $36 million? No one. Can't do it. It's a, hey, listen, what do they all the players say? Business. It's business. It's all about business. i got to get my money. You think the owners are going to uh, take one in the back like that? Do we all believe that Wentz made it perfectly clear that he did not want to play again yes. with Peterson? Yeah. I, I he may, Mitch he got always said he was – sorry, Mitch always said he, was, he would go over uh, – Doug's head right, right to the owner. Right. Yep. He had the owner's ear all year. All right, so we're on record. That's five of us and uh, one very helpful consultant in the audience. That's six of us what, what that I, all believe. What I was shocked at is that, you know, if you're a competitor and you see some guy that they want to take a look at and you feel in your heart that this is this is he's taking my job, don't you come out and say, hey, you know what? Let's go head-to-head -head next year. We'll find out who's the best quarterback. And what did you, he you say? Don't, you don't say one of us have to go. No, no, right? You know what? Competition, that's what pushes you. I thought he was mentally a lot tougher Oof. than what he's shown. That's right. And, and I have not seen that mental toughness. It was like, woe is me. You can't, how, can you, how dare you draft another quarterback? He was very content in the backup they had before because that wasn't – he wasn't – there was no chance that guy was going to take his play. Absolutely. But he saw the skills of, of Hurts, and Hurts. now he's saying, whoa, wait a minute here. This guy brings a lot to the table. But He came out and said he, does, he has no interest in a competition. Right. Competition. So this is a guy. He couldn't play for him. Right. No, I can tell I, you I, I straight would, would, up. Look I, where he went to right. college. Yeah. He's yeah. not going to go to a big D1 right. and sit and, right. and that compete. Is, that's he shocking. He went to North Dakota I, State and I started. I misread him. I thought he was mentally a lot yeah. tougher than he was. And he doesn't touch uh, Hurts' stats from college. It's not no. close. It, anybody not at two, close, at, right? two big schools, exactly. power five yeah. schools. Exactly. Anybody that says in 17 – that the Eagles would have won that Super Bowl with Wentz behind center, there is zero chance that would have happened. Because what is that? That's a competition with the best quarterback of all time. Yeah. Yep. I, I know we're not supposed to curse on this, but go I ahead. can tell you right now, he would have shit down both legs. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. We're off and running. If hey, they been say it on TV, Super we Bowl, can say it here. If he'd have been putting that <laughs> game against Brett, Brady, he would have folded. Right. Like a tent. And look how opportunistic they were just to get there. I mean, come yeah. on. Oh, my he, God. You couldn't orchestrate a, a play. The director would say, come on, it's not believable, the audience. I mean, game after game, I mean, you have the play in the Minnesota New Orleans game. It's yeah. One out of a gazillion. Uh, I mean, the drop with Julio Jones. I mean, it looks like it was also pass interference if you look at it. They got every break in the world to get there. So, yeah. you know, a true anomaly is what the Eagle fans are waking up now saying, we were really lucky to win. In 17. And, and, and what's the sign, Bo, of, of, a, of a World Series uh, winner, a, a, a good team? You get back. You compete again. Right. It's not a one and done. Yeah, you don't right. want – yeah, exactly. And Phillies won. And, and they might have got back because right. if Jeffrey doesn't drop, number one, why they rushed to get that play in before the two-minute warning – I, I still don't understand. I that. have no right. idea. No. I don't understand. You don't want to give Drew Brees nope. 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 two minutes to that. beat you. They were on their 25. Take a timeout, but they rushed it. Foles still threw a perfect pass, went right through Jeffrey's hand. Oh. Or they'd have been back in the National, oh. League or in the national Championship game. Not in, National Championship, yeah. NFC Championship. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me. Getting back to, to Wentz, you know, when, when they did win the, the, the Super Bowl, how about all the, the – the going back and forth, or they got to get Foles out of here because Wentz doesn't. That's he right. didn't want that competition That's even right. then. Exactly. And the, guy, the guy just won a a, a, a a Super Bowl for you. You think it, that Wentz would have said, "Hey, man, that was great. I, I want you to be here, but I'm the quarterback. Let's go. We'll see what happens." But it, he made it very apparent. I don't want. I don't want Foles here. How do you pay a guy that much money that doesn't want to compete? I don't. I don't get it. Everyone's looking for what happened. How did he go so bad from 2017 to now? Well, let's look. Foles right. won a Super Bowl. Won a Super Bowl. You got to live with that. Live with that. And then next year he's still there. And bails you out again. Correct. Win, wins a right. playoff game. And and now that what do they do after they finally get rid of Foles? They draft Hurts right. in the Hurts. second round. Right. That that's what it is. Right. He's got no mental toughness. Uh, toughness if you're, if like you're a sensitive said, yep. player, you're reacting to all that stuff. If Absolute, you're absolutely. And, and in 17, when he had the real good touchdown uh, ratio, which you understand, everybody said he would have been all pro, probably would have been all that stuff. Mm -hmm. 
his completion ratio is only 60%. That wasn't his big year. The next year, you got it. That's he, right. He, he was came, higher. He came prepared. Well, what, do you, what, do you think, what do you think his teammates are saying in the locker room when he comes out with, I don't want a competition, this is my job, uh, get rid of Foles, get rid of Hurt. What do you think guys playing around him think they're going, Man, Spineless. Do I do I want to do I want to battle with this guy? And no. somebody finally reports that. I, what does anybody remember? The Inquirer, the guy got in a lot, took a lot of heat for publishing the article. Marcus Hayes. Yeah, I don't know Italian name. Oh. I should have brought it with me yet today. Uh, but he was the first person. Anastasia, not Anastasia. To uh, say that there was a divided clubhouse and took oh. a lot of. You well, can see it, it on the Jeffries, field. Was it? Yeah. You, you can see up? it on the field when you're standing in the huddle. The quarterback is spo- supposed to have ten sets of eyes on him. Mm-hmm. When Wentz was in the huddle, I told Ray this. Mm-hmm. There wasn't one guy looking at him. And then Hertz came in, and now all of them were spun around looking at Hertz. You you could see a difference in just their demeanor and the way they carried themselves on the field. They score a touchdown. Hertz would run down there and celebrate with his team. When Wentz threw a touchdown, if he did, he walked to the sideline. He didn't celebrate with his teammates. That is a guy that is not liked in his own locker room. React to uh, Lori's comment about I'm more concerned or as concerned about the process, and we have the potential five GMs here inside uh, in versus winning. Okay, here's is it, a, isn't the name of the game winning, and you need a process to get yeah, there? I mean, if you yeah. get process. How about this? Winning. This came out today. Doug – wasn't he even given the opportunity to to say who was going to dress every week. I, I saw, I heard that. Yeah. Howie is the one that chose that. every player that. every weekend. That's he decided on who was dressing, who was inactive. Can you imagine? That's wrong. Well, yeah. and the other thing they came out and said at the press conference, which was, <laughs> it was a weird press conference. They were getting on about the drafts, and yes, and, and Jeffrey said, "How about this now? You're running a t- big time team." He goes, well, sometimes we had a guy we wanted to pick, but he got taken. Yeah. To, to, don't you have a plan A, <laughs> yeah. B, C, yes. D? Now, if, if they take Mitch first and take Chuck second, right. then who we get to? <laughs> then how they, the hell did they, they miss so B, BK Metcalf <sighs> and Jeffrey? That, right. That's ridiculous. So that Jefferson, you mean? Jefferson. Jefferson, oh, my, yeah. my son. Unbelievable. That's he impossible. was throwing stuff the day of the draft yeah, when they impossible. took Rager. But, I mean, you've got to have th- th- three different plans. If, if, they happen to, if you're picking eight. And there's eight teams ahead of you. Okay, he's going to take him. He's going to take – okay, if it gets down to us, if this guy's here, we're taking him. If he's not, we're going mm-hmm. here, here, and here. That made them look really bad. They yeah. had five potential GMs but couldn't get that. Right. Okay, yeah. they have five potential GMs, right? <laughs> Here's a little stat for you, Shark. In the last five years, the Eagles are the second worst in draft return. The wow. second worst in all of football. Well, wow. One Pro Bowl player in six, seven, seven, years. seven years, yeah. All right. I've been told by uh, Chad we got a mo- 11 minutes left for the first yeah. segment. All right. so wow. All right. So um, I think what we'll do maybe is shift some of one to two. That's not a big problem. It's no. going to be the Phillies baseball. That's fine. We'll add yeah. whole things. Or do, I, we, we can uh, react to that. I'd like uh, uh, Tommy Lasorda passed away. God bless him. Uh, rest in peace. And I know you guys, what a character he was. Yeah. Great uh, if you guys could just share a little bit. Tommy's one of those guys that you don't believe that anyone can be that excited about the game of baseball. That's great. But Tommy was. I, I for years, wanted to find a hole in his act and his shtick and all that. He truly loved, number one, the Dodgers yep. and baseball. He was an ambassador of both. Big time. He hated, hated me with a passion. Really? We were in uh, L.A., and it was real – Dewey and crappy, which it got like every night after the seventh because that sea breeze and fog would come in. But I end up bases loaded and nobody out in a one-run game. And Tommy's in the dugout walking back and forth, getting everybody's attention. He was all happy. And then who was it? Sharperson. Mike Sharperson came up who couldn't hit anybody but me, I think. (laughs) <laughs> he hit a line drive up the middle. I'm like, oh, crap. And Mickey lays out, robs the line drive, steps on second for a double play, and Tommy is <laughs> losing his mind. In the <laughs> dug- he could have been – it could have been anyone else. Mariano Rivera, but Mitch Williams getting out of a bases loaded, nobody out jam in L.A., Tommy did not like that. That's <laughs> unbelievable. Coach, can I ask you real quick, before you give us a, a story, is it true – 
about the Mike Piazza getting drafted in the Good 62nd question. round as a favor to Tommy. I guess Tommy Lasorda was his godfather. They, they, that's, that, that's a true story. They, they, yeah, yeah, and everyone lives by it, too. So there's another guy, Hall of Famer, that would have never had a career. I mean, six. how many guys make it? Six, he couldn't throw that ball to Chad. They don't even have 62 rounds. maybe 36 rounds. Right, it was yeah. he was like towards the bottom of the. Of I'm, that, I'm that's telling where you, it was. Yeah, I think Ray's right. I think it was in the 60s. 62nd round. Yeah, had to be round. It was way, it was way down. Right. It was way hey, down. Hey, Bo, you remember that thing they used to test your grip? Hit yeah, a, yeah. They had a deal. Well, it his, had a his, gauge on it. His was off the charts. He closed it. They had a deal. You take this thing. It's like a grip strength, and it has a reading on it. I've seen I don't know hundreds of guys do this, right. and I've done it. I grabbed it and went. <laughs> And you don't feel it move, nothing. It just tells you your grip strength. 60 second, yeah. And Piazza closed it. His hands were that strong. He couldn't throw the ball from me to Chad. Right, he, he didn't have a, he didn't have a strong he had, arm. But. He, the pitcher was a cutoff man on stolen bases. But you can't take away what he did with that bat in his no, hand. No, yeah, no. Yeah. That's unbelievable offensive statistics. Bo, uh, a good Tommy story. Yeah, it, it, it was L.A., and uh, they were beating the heck out of us, 11 to nothing. And – Usually when it's that score, especially when we play, the game's usually over, let's face it. it the pitching wasn't, wasn't like it is now where you got a, a guy pitches one hitter and take him out and all that. But anyway, so I looked over there. I was coaching third, and he took, he took a Say out. He took uh, Lopes out. And I'm looking over there. He keeps taking guys out. And so we start coming. It was 11-3, then it went 11-5, then 11-7. And I'm looking over there. And once they're out of the game, those guys – they're up in the shower. And, they're all <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we get to the ninth inning, and sure enough, there's two men on, and John Cruck didn't start because he did something that Jim Fergosi didn't like. So we were down to our last player, and he had Cruck pinch hit. And you guess it, Cruck, he had a three-run homer, and we took the lead, and I looked <laughs> over there. Because he's chirping the whole game. He goes, oh, I love it, Bo. He says, I love beating you guys. You have no idea what it's like beating you. And as we got closer – I kept looking in the dugout because third base is right there. And he started – the chirping got a little less and less right, every right. inning. <laughs> and then in the ninth inning, I look over there. When the ball left the ballpark, he goes, you got to be kidding me. I, I didn't – he, he <laughs> said <laughs> worse, 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 worse. Yeah. This is the big league. You're not supposed to lose 11 to nothing uh, lead like uh, that. Sure. And the next day I went over there. I said, Tom, are you going to keep these guys in here? <laughs> I'm going to tell you how, how bad that thing was. Don Drysdale, who did the after game – a star of the game. Right. He left in the he sixth left. inning <laughs> because he, he was going to let somebody else do the, the after game thing. They said he had to get back in the car and come back to the stadium and interview John Cruck, who oh, got the, the three run home. <laughs> I can tell you, Crucky wasn't any happier than Don on that. No, right, no, yeah, no. right, right. No, I have a brief story. We were at the Philadelphia Sports Writers Banquet, and the chances of me running the time was sort of were very uh, slim. <laughs> However, I was invited to the private suite where the athletes uh, went to after the thing real quick. Everybody had a drink and left. I think I got the invite by Frank Dolson. You know. Oh, yeah, Frank. Uh, Frank Why Dolson. do I know that name? He was a big-time writer. Philadelphia Inquirer. Oh, okay. Writer. Yeah. yeah. So um, I see Lasorda, and Mike Schmidt was honored that particular year. I forget the year. And you, you, know, you think the guy's just going to give you a handshake, and that's it. And what do you expect? He's talking to Lasorda. Here. But no, not all. We were talk- chatting for like 10 minutes. And you just give me inside baseball. And I tell you, but I played back and forth and just gleaned all these insights. And uh, he says, you know that Schmidt? He says, uh, I sat alongside him tonight. I said, yeah, I noticed. I said, you guys were convincing a lot. I said, you guys look like you're actually having a good time. He says, well, he's got a lot of nerve. He goes, you know how many runs he took away from the Dodgers with his work at third base? Now, I'm biting in 100%. His time in Lasorda. So he says Bo's gospel today. I'm naive. You know, <laughs> even though I'm in, like, my 40s. And I go, yeah, he was, you know, unbelievable third baseman. He goes, yeah, I watch him win games with that glove of his. And do you know tonight he dropped his fork five times? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, so, yeah, you he, remember when the Fanatic used to bring that Dodger oh, ball out there oh, and beat yeah. the hell out of yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they got in a fight. Tommy yeah. did not like that no, one he, bit. No, he, he didn't. hated it. He didn't. He, uh, he, he told me a story <laughs> once, and I used it when I managed, but I never tell anybody that I got it from Tommy. He said he went to the mound one day. Eric Gregg was behind the plate, and they, they were getting their brains beat out. It was hot. It, it was some game on the East Coast, and every everything that happened, Tommy's the movie made it backfired, and he said that that Eric missed all kinds of pitches. You know, knowing Tommy, how can you call that pitch a ball? So he goes to the mound, and Eric Greg comes out there, sweat coming down. You know, big Eric, and he goes, Tommy, he had a lefty and a righty warming up, 
And he goes, Tommy, who are you bringing in? And Tommy just looked at him. He says, come on, man. You're getting beat by nine runs. Who are you bringing in, the lefty or righty? And he Tommy says, guess just like you've been doing on the balls and strikes all day long. <laughs> 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 Needless to say, Eric ran him right there on the mound. <laughs> all right, so, uh, Mitch, you're going to represent 08. Bo, uh, yeah. I think, has got 80 covered pretty uh, pretty well. And oh, before you do this? Yep, yep. They already did a simulation of this. Yeah. Right. And the Phillies in 81, four games of two. So we'll go from there. You got the game winning <laughs> hit in game three or something. Yep. I, I but saw. I just yeah. wanted to just clarify everything right? before we yeah. move forward. Okay. And just to irritate Bo, I'm going to go back and push back and say, <laughs> and the highest war team was uh, 08 that had the higher war. But anyway, let's let's have some fun with this. Why don't we get started? Yep. At catcher. And uh, we could move to, to me, that's a, you go back, Booney could change the game. There's no question about that with the way you received. Defensively crazy good. Yep. Tremendous yeah. behind the plate. And I have, uh, have said for years, because people have asked me my opinion, who was the most valuable player on that 2008 team? Right. For me, hands down, it was Ruiz. Because I don't think there was another <clears throat> catcher in baseball that could have kept Lidge's slider in front of him oh the way God. that yeah. Ruiz did. I, I, that's that's and, interesting. And, and go yeah. 48 for 48. Yeah. And the only reason Lidge is 48 for 48 is because Chooch was so good good right. at blocking the ball. So MVP maybe to that team that as you compare the two for the years they had, are we leaning towards Boone, I think? I'm overall. leaning towards Boone. I think Boone, <laughs> I think Booney would be a better overall catcher. Yeah. He's not going to hit a bunch of home runs. He's not going right. to be real dangerous offensively. Just to pick some time back up on the, on the shirt side, if we spread their numbers, they're almost like identical offensively. Right. Uh, what would I you didn't even look at it, and yeah, I, I t said that. Yeah, but when you look at Boone's, uh, I was shocked last night because I had no idea as you rank all of the players that ever played defensively, D. War, and of course Ozzy Smith. Is, anybody that doesn't believe in D. War, go write down who you think would be top ten, and it's exactly what it is. You know, right. There's, there's, right. You don't see any discrepancies. Right. Ozzy's number one. <coughs> Booney's 16th Major wow. League Baseball history. Really? That's D. War. Really? That's unbelievable. Yep. So you have to go and break it down. And well, you, when you take and look at his stats. The stats are this, very, this guy very throws close. Out, this guy throws out 40% yeah. of base runners. No, no, no. That's a career. His apex is 53%. He had years in the 50s. So yeah. it was defensive run saved for yep. his career. He, well, so I ended up spreading all this stuff last night because, you know, Molina, Carter, other ones. The only catcher statistically that ranks in all categories. Pudge. Pudge. Yeah. Pudge. I what believe made, that. See, I never even looked this stuff. Booney had a that's cannon good, for that, That's good. Booney, yeah. Booney I, when he first came up, had a, a cannon because he originally had a third baseman. Okay. But his last four, five, six years. Unbelievably quick release. It's just, it was a transfer. Okay. The transfer I mean, out of his glove it's, it's was so I, I don't quick. remember his, his him His footwork was unbelievable. His accuracy was unbelievable. Uh, and you're seeing this in practice. You're watching him get better. Yep. Yep. You're saying, oh, oh, we have the best catcher in baseball. We, we did. He was, he, he could, he could, you know what I look for a real good catcher? Not the guys that can catch uh, Halliday or Carlton. Mm -hmm. yeah. The guys that can catch a mediocre pitcher and get him through six innings. And with make him look good. With yeah. mediocre stuff. That, that to me tells you all you want to know about. You know, I have a soft he, spot. He was a leader. Yes. I'm, I'm going to have to lean towards Booney because he, yeah. he's the one that right. released me for the final time. Me too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll canonize uh, Booney. Okay. And, and uh, let's go to third. We'll move uh, oh, you can skip third. We'll skip you can skip third. third. For, yeah. right, forget third. And, skip uh, third. Shortstop, <laughs> now I'll, we're talking. I'll, I'll, I want okay. Bo to go first. I'll, I'll go first. Uh, uh, Jimmy, to me, is a Hall of Fame shortstop. Okay. All right. Without a doubt. Okay. And to be compared to him as the second best shortstop, that's an honor for me. I mean, I watch I, – I basically – when I got him the very first year, I knew it was going to be something special. Did I know he was going to be that strong and hit that many home runs? No. No. I, I can tell you this. He would not have been the defensive player he was without Bo. I helped him a lot. There's no question about that defensively. But Jimmy, to me – and it, people say, well, he might be a, a, a borderline. No, to me, he's, he's a Hall of Famer. You check his numbers with all those guys at shortstop, it's not even close. Yeah, I have Jimmy, if he doesn't get in the Hall of Fame, that's a disgrace to the Hall of Fame. And uh, to me, he was he had that uh, he had that little swag about him that oh, yeah. that, that, that it rubbed off on guys that, and and those guys that really didn't believe he. You know what? As as quiet as that was, 
that learned a lot about Jimmy about being, you know, hey, we're good. When we he can predicted he was going to, they were going to win the division. Oh yeah, yeah. The so I, Jimmy, yeah. without a doubt, I, I give Jimmy. And he had one one MVP season. Oh yeah. The thing people don't but realize, you had a better than career average offensively that year. Right. Yourself. Right. Yeah. And, but, uh, and as always, you're very transparent and humble, and, and you're 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 fair. But you did have a very good year defensively, as always. And I, you had a better than career. Uh, you, you know, people ask me what, what the greatest thing that, that happened to me. Well, obviously, winning the World Series, that's one. But the fact that I came in third in MVP of the whole league behind Parker and Garvey that one year. Wow. And, and you man. know what? I, I, I look back at that, and I'm going, God, those guys were two <laughs> masters. And I came, I in, I came in third, and I got that many votes. I said, that's unbelievable. Hey, Bo, say those two names again, right? Oh, yeah, I yeah. know it. Sure. I know yeah, it. But Jimmy, to me, uh, I would be shocked. I'm talking about uh, he shouldn't have to wait. If you look at his numbers, Jeter went in right away. Right. And is he going to get 95 or percent? Probably not. But if he doesn't get over the the the, uh, the 75 percent the first time, that that would be a disgrace, I think. Now Utley has a monster year, 915 OPS. He has a bunch of doubles, a bunch of home runs uh, against Trio. So I think that's pretty much a slam dunk. It's a slam dunk offensively. offensively. It's not a slam dunk defense. Oh, defensively, no, Manny had a cannon. There, it there. it is a slam dunk arm. defensively. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's Manny it's defensively. Manny. It's not even close. Chase wasn't really a good no. second baseman. No. Chase, Chase made himself a very good second baseman, but he's not even in the same breath defensively. Arm-wise, everything. But he brought a lot to the table. But, but brought a lot to the table. This is he where was, the analytics his leadership kids are going to have to and, push uh, back on the pros. Chase, Chase saved a lot of runs. Yeah, Chase's defense. I'm sure he did. Saved. And again, we've we've given some credence here to D War and O War. Mike Trout's the, they do correlate. The, the people that want to push back on analytics tend not to want to talk War. But if you do, but, we understand a little bit. It aligns, okay? Chase Otley is like 63rd in baseball in defensive runs saved. Manny Trio is 512. See, and, and I'm, I'm looking at that year that, that Manny had. It was unbelievable. And the other thing that people don't take into consideration, you're playing on turf. You're not going to get to some balls. That, that right. ball was like playing marbles in a bathtub oh at the vet. Right. <laughs> and, no and, kidding. And, you're, and you're playing at the vet, yeah. I mean, at the yeah. Citizens Bank where it's grass and dirt, and you can let the grass grow a little bit, yeah. and you can slow it down a little bit. Right. They, don't, they don't put that into the equation. That when you're playing on AstroTurf, you're playing much deeper. You're trying to get to balls where guys like Dave Parker hit and those right. big guys right. that get top spin on it. The ball gets through there quicker. So that, that can be very uh, 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 deceiving as far as that those numbers are concerned. We, we know Trio had a better arm. There's no argument oh. there. Is, yeah. it, is it possible that Utley was ahead of his time as far as cheating too, knowing hitters? Knowing oh, yeah. Players, Utley, Utley was very cerebral very playing cerebral the game. No, no question. I think that's where you Very get smart that player. Yeah. He, those stats don't he just lie. didn't have the t – I'll use Bo as an example. He ain't gifted with the best athletic ability. Jimmy, hands down, right. more athletic yeah. ability. Right. No question. Ch Chase, you watch him throw a baseball, it looked foreign to him. Right. Fielding it. There was a lot of things in the way he did it that were right. There were a lot of things that were wrong. Throwing is the difference in those two. Right. Just the arm strength and, and, and the ability. I don't think that Chase could have played on that turf at the vet, at the vet and had the success simply because of what Bo's saying. That turf at the vet, at the vet had no padding. Oh. It was just turf over asphalt. And when that ball hit it, it was gone. And what, what that did is he made himself – he worked hard. He was an unbelievable worker. Uh, he studied hitters. I mean, he was he was good. So given Utley's I'll give Utley the edge. Yeah, he has two hundred twenty runs run right. production. Yeah, here. So there's no it's question. Not all you want, you can't right. catch up. Yeah. Now we go to first. It gets a little bit interesting. We yeah, it gets really Howard interesting. Howard has a we got big a guy that, year. We got a guy that can't catch a ball at first, and then you got Pete. And then right. you got a guy that got four thousand over four thousand hits, yeah. which is unreal. You're talking twenty two hundred hits a year for over twenty years. <laughs> Uh, was he the missing link coach that uh, yes. they say he was that brought him in to win yes, the series? without a doubt. Okay. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, and if, if you, you don't if believe Bo, ask Pete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're going to get hey, him on the show. If, if you're looking We're for, getting him on if our you're show. Looking for, if you're looking for home runs, it's Howie. No question. Yeah. If you're looking for the overall running the bases, being able to steal bases at certain parts of the situation, scoring from first on a double, good secondary leads. Balls to the wall. Uh, unbelievable mentally. How he was ab above everybody, you know. Baseball IQ. His baseball IQ is yeah. off the charts. Yeah. I never seen anybody like that. The in closest my life. 
I've ever seen is Lenny. Yep, Lenny was very intelligent. Yes. Smartest so baseball you can pick player. Whoever you want, you, you, if you want the home runs and ribbies, you got Howie. If you Let's want the from overall, our analytics, it, it, I got a voice of the let, let me ask you this: Does 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 Howard? Make the play that Pete did when when no. Booney dropped the no, ball. He'd not no, even he's not close to that play. <laughs> no, he'd have run over Booney. <laughs> no, but Howie. If he'd have had four gloves on, he wouldn't have made that catch. <laughs> but Howie. Could, and I love Howie. But Howie could hit balls a long oh, way. Oh sure. Drive in a lot of runs. And, I I uh, was just suspicious. I, I, not not too many people in players in baseball when you add the RBIs and runs together. Oh, he counted for two hundred and fifty. Oh, he's he was runs. a great offensive That's player. That's way more than Rose's run production that year, and it does go down to run production. Defense means a lot, but at the end of the day, if you don't hit. Well, knock runners well, let me no ask you this. Right? Do you think uh, Howie's going to get in the Hall of Fame? With a ticket no. the same way no. I don't. And I don't. I don't think but, it's going to be close. But take away what Pete did, Pete yeah. would have been in oh, yeah. Yeah. a long time ago. No, this is the problem I have with all this, Chuck. Yep. The Hall of Fame has no problem, no issue at all, with putting Pete Rose's jersey, bats, cleats, everything else right. up there. That's right. They're hypocrites. They That's are. all that. They're making money off Pete, Pete Ro uh, Rose, and he's not in there. Well, wrong. How about this? If <laughs> if Pete would have, we all know, if he just came out right when this happened and said, you know what, I screwed up, he'd have been in the Hall of Fame. But he kept I denying, denying, denying. And uh, Mitch knows there's people in the Hall of Fame. That, that Believe me, you don't, you, do you want to go in there and look in their closet? Yeah. Because there's a whole lot of guys in there that shouldn't be in there because of the so-called ethics and all that. Right. But they're in there. Is so. it fair to say that, and Howard had a monster year, but is it is it fair to Howard to say about Pete that the way Pete influenced everybody else and made them a better player yeah. to win a World Series culture-wise? No question. Everything. That's why he was brought in. Yep. That's why he was brought yeah, in. Yeah, he was the missing piece. So he gets extra credit for, uh, no for question. the year that he But, had. Again, again, you know, you're, you're, it's apples and oranges. Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. want a home run and drive in runs, it, it's a no-brainer. It's a tough it's, call. It's a tough call. Yeah, it's a very tough call. But see, the intangibles to me, mm. that's sometimes what puts you over the hump and get into a World Series. It's the little things. And Pete brought a lot of. If you're things. asking me as a pitcher who I want playing first ba base uh, yeah, hitting, yes. I would probably want Pete because of his right. glove over yeah, Howard. No doubt about it. Are and until it was time to hit, and then I take Howard. Yeah. Are we <laughs> able to continue to the outfield? Do we need to take a break? No, we don't need a break. We're good. All right, let's continue. Let's go to left field. We know who the players were, Mitch. Who were the players? Bull. <laughs> oh, Bull. Bull. <laughs> it's Worth. No, Jason was right field. He was oh, right field. Uh, Burl. Burl. Victor Burl. 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 Oh, oh, that's a tough one. Pat the bat. Uh, for assists, I'm absolutely going to Burl. Knew where to throw the baseball. Didn't have the strongest arm. But every time there was a situation with a runner on base, that ball got thrown to the correct base every single time, and that's why he had the assist he had. But when I look, the other guy, he was another coach of mine in Atlantic City Bowl. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure defensively. It's tough because offensively they're going to be similar. What does it say defensively yeah. on there? Yeah, it's not close. It's really not close anywhere because it's one of Pat's biggest years. I mean, yeah. I 33 think home runs. I think a slam dunk, actually, yeah. in left field. So I thought. As I do center and right, but I'm not – It's you guys played. I'm just the analytics guy. So let's go to center field. Center, <laughs> center was uh, – well, right. one, 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 one thing That's about scary, Bull, right? if, if, I know they have stats for it. Go look up how many two-out hits this guy got. Yeah. Unbelievable. And yeah. he's hitting behind Schmitty. So all those RBIs that Schmitty got and the ones Bull got, just think of what – if Schmitty would have got the two out hits that Bull got, Schmitty would be way – he's off the charts anyway. Absolutely. But Bull got a lot of two out hits. Him and Tony Perez were the best two out RBI guys that I've ever seen play baseball. It's unbelievable. Chuck, and he makes barbecue. Yeah, the barbecue's <laughs> great. <I think. laughs> it, it should be footnoted, too, that uh, – you know, Pat played 157 games. He, you get yeah. a full measure where Bull only played 106 that mm -hmm. year because mm -hmm. he because had a pretty good other left fielder that came in and had a great year. Well, him so. and Dallas didn't get along either, yeah. so yeah. that had a lot to do with oh, it. Oh, yeah. Bull didn't let Dallas and Bull didn't get along? No, we, why don't you give us a little bit on that, Bill? No, he just he, he benched him one game, and, and, and Bull went off, man. Did he? He says, what are, you doing? what are you doing? He says, well, you're not swinging very good. He says, I'm not swinging very good. He says, I you put me up there with man on second base or man on third. And, and you know, one thing about Dallas, you know, he went with Lonnie Smith. He went with Keith Moreland. 
he took all those guys out because he thought we were underachieving going down the stretch. And he, he could care less if he hurt your feelings. It was okay to do that with guys, but the one guy that you didn't want to do it with and he did it with is the center fielder. Gary Maddox, he was very uh, – if you got on him, you, you're going to lose him. Mm-hmm. And uh, he got on Gary a few times, and that didn't go over too good. Bull got thick skin. You can say whatever you want oh, yeah. to Bull. Right. He's going to jump back up and get in your face and all that. But with Maddox, you had to be – you had to be careful. It's amazing how the temperament between. Oh, it's unbelievable. Right, Bull was a blue collar guy. Gary was very. I don't want to. It wasn't temperamental, but he didn't like people to jump on him or, or anything. Always like Schmidt that. like that way. I mean, Schmidt started out that way, but right. Schmidt Schmidt was okay at the end. And he attributes a lot of that to Rose. I yep. Think, right. Yes, he does. Rose tells a story one time, and it may not be true, but I saw him a couple times. Had the luxury of talking to him for an hour one night, and uh, and I was telling him how much I admired your career player you were and obviously he concurred and you'll tell me if this story is true or not and i'm not gonna use it. i gotta clean this up a little bit so this is a game where you're playing together after rose comes over to philadelphia i'll tell the story quickly here and you need to put a sacrifice bunt down and you don't get it over right you come into the uh, dugout he aired me out I, <laughs> the he aired me out he <laughs> says what are you and now he I, says now, bow is, you got, you he, pete, pete says oh. bow you, get, that's your job. He says, that's your job. You get and, it down. And apparently, Bo says something about next time or whatever. And before he gets done saying that, Rose screams, get the effing bunt down. It, that's a, you're exactly right. About and that. this is after I made like five all-star teams. So it wasn't like I was a rookie. <laughs> no, right. I said, I know I got to get it down. Right. But I mean, that's how we played back then. Right, right. He didn't have to tell me. And you I guys knew. were fine in the clubhouse after that, right? Well, that, that, right. we did that every game. Every game. But see, that, well, you, knew what Great your, story. you knew what your job was. As a singles and doubles hitter, you get the, the runners over for the big boys. That's, right. your, job. that's right. your job. Don't. There's no excuses. You're, that's what you're getting paid to do. He, I, could, I didn't even get to the dugout. What are you doing? you got to get that bunt down. I said, you're right. I do. I have to get the bunt down. But not today. Not today. Coach, they're, they're swinging up and flying oh, out the, yeah, flying yeah, out the, the center. Other thing, the, the, if you did that today, a oh. guy would probably call his agent and say, hey, man, this guy got all over me, my teammate. All right, so pat the bat. We moved to center field. We got Victor Reno. Uh, who has his career that year. Boy, he did have a – he, 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 he was yeah. clutch. Man. Yeah. When he took yeah. CC deep. Oh, yeah. oh, and, and this man. is why the team had a higher war one. Offensively, it looks like the superior team. And, and, and Worth, uh, McBride had a good year, but Jason Worth had one of his best years. Yeah, so I know. He, he wins right field. So offensively, I think we can concur that th- it was the 08 team that, that had better run production. That 08 team was a beast right. from and top could, to bottom. We could break down some of the pinch hitters, but I think you still end up with the same conclusion before you talk about pitching but why don't we have both start off with yeah for the pitching well they yeah. we had <laughs> yeah right he was a stud i mean when he went to the mound and i can go all the way back to 72 when i first came up 27 wins no, and, what, and what did we have you see he, he was 50 percent of your uh, yeah, did, did we right. have 54 yeah. 54 and uh, that is that right that's there, an amazing that tells stuff, you yeah. all you want to know about this guy that's amazing <clears throat> and we had a young team we didn't hit Nobody hit on that team. But we knew when Carlton walked through that clubhouse, th- this is all he would say. Today's win day. And everybody turned no, around. He sh- walked to his really? <laughs> and we, But we knew as a team, if we got two runs, we were going to win. Over. Right. We were going to win two to one. Whereas the other guys that came in, we'd have to get six. We, right. weren't, we weren't capable at that time to get six runs. But that's the only things he said when he walked in when he pitched. Today's win day, boys. Any way you'd have to, any way you have to do it, do it. He was ahead of his time with Gus Heffling and doing oh, he all the a, uh, his regimen, his the, discipline. The, the, remember, he had the, the rice and in, in the, uh, it, you know, he stick his hand and the arm in the rice. And a, 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 a good story about that with Carlton. So Larry Christensen's pitching, and he sees he sees Carlton never go on the field to run. So he goes into Danny Ozark's office and he says, "Hey, Danny, I, I want to do Carlton's program." Danny goes. What are you talking about? He said, he never runs. So Danny says, okay, you can do the program with Gus and Lefty, and then we'll see how it works out. He went back there for one day. He, he didn't even go 40 minutes. He came back out. He says, Danny, I think I'll run. He how said, about oh. it? I mean, it was a, it was how such a workout. It? Sure. And it was with the, these poles and, and uh, isometrics, and uh-huh. there were no weights. It was all 
isometric stuff yeah. and, and kung fu and kicking yeah. your leg. And, <laughs> That's funny. And I, I, I watched that one day. a high and, leg kick, oh too. Oh, my God. Have but you the, ever tried the rice thing? Oh, your forearm. The UCL, all that muscle, all the muscles that surround that UCL, you can't do it in the weight room. No. But Lefty found a way to build the muscles around that. Really? I did it by throwing. Lefty did it with his workouts with Gus. Lefty was. Yeah, I, I mean, it It comes down to work. Yeah. And yeah. Understand, understanding w- how the work you're doing is going to help you. And a lot of the stuff they do, it, it doesn't help. You can do one exercise, go out and throw, but they don't do that either. No, they don't. That, that to me, that I look at that and they go, if you throw, you're going to get hurt. You're throwing too much. You're throwing too Ask Bo. No. I threw as hard as I could throw every single day I walked on a baseball field. He did. I had him and Voop. Yeah, he did. I go out in the outfield. <clears throat> they'd hit me fly balls. I didn't lob the ball back in. I, I tried to hurt Voop because he didn't use a glove. He caught everything from us barehanded. He's hitting this fly ball. I rifled it in. Uh, did Carlton uh, stay in, in the league too long? Do you think yes. he played yeah, too long? Yeah, okay. he did. So he then did. at the end, you yeah, go yeah, to all had, those teams. Yeah, but he White had an Sox agent. He had an agent that made off with a lot of his money. So right. really? Lefty was just trying to make some yeah, money. Yeah, he, he, really? he stayed on too long. But yeah. What was Danny like? Who's that? Ozark. Danny was great for our team. I, I'm serious. And, and, but you talk about two different personalities. Yeah. When Danny left, now Dallas comes in. Yeah, boys, oh, my. Right? That's why a lot of those guys had trouble with Players him. Players didn't like Dallas, they said, right? Well, because he was very outspoken. And, right. and uh, uh, you know, he had one press conference. First of all, he, it, when he took over, he went right down. He, he didn't care who it was, Schmitty, me, Levinsky. He says, you think you're better than you are. You haven't done anything. Bo, you think you're very good. You haven't done shit. <laughs> he, goes, he goes right around the clubhouse. I mean. Yes. This is really? T- yeah. That just says, you guys have been reading too many articles. You never – getting in the playoffs, what, big deal. Well, why don't you bring back a ring one time? <laughs> and so so after one of the games, at the vet, the manager's office is right there. And so if the door's open, right. you can hear everything he says. So they wow. went in there, and uh, he ripped the crap out of the whole team. We played bad. We got beat. And he says, these guys think they're better than they are. They haven't done anything until they do something. He says they're going to still struggle or blah, blah, blah. So, of course, Schmidt ain't going to say anything and Bull's not going to say anything. So the writers, as soon as it was over, they come to me. Right. <laughs> and, and I'm in the middle, and Mitch knows me. I'm in the middle of Bull and Schmidt, and, and they go, hey, did you hear what Dallas said? I said, did I hear it? What do you mean, did I hear it? Everybody heard it. <laughs> and he says, do you have a comment? And I said, yeah, I do. Ask him how many games he's won in the big leagues. Oh, no. <laughs> so they go back oh, and God. so they go back and tell Dallas this, and this is the honest of God. Dallas comes out and tips us out, and he goes, "Touche, Bo." Touché. That's <laughs> right. Uh-oh. So that that's how that. A lot of shows a lot about Dallas too, in a way. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, see, uh, a lot of yeah. people don't have any idea about that. My second to last kid is named Dallas. There you go. Because after the World Series '93, '93, I came back with the Astros. Dallas was managing the Mets. Well, I came out early for BP. I'm sitting on the bench just in our dugout, and Dallas walks all the way over from his dugout to our, ours, sticks his head down in there, points at me, and says, you can play for me anytime." Yep. Turned around and walked off. Right. That, that's because all the stuff that went on in the World Series, and yeah. I didn't have an excuse for it, right. wasn't going to search for one. But Dallas, him coming over and saying that to me, Knowing the baseball guy that he was, that meant the world to me. Yep. He, uh, Hence my it, son's he, name is Dallas. Sometimes it doesn't take you much. Know, you, asked, you asked me about if Pete got us over the hump. He mm-hmm. did, but Dallas did too. Right. And, and like I said, Danny Ozar, he let us play. He just said, he threw the bats and balls out, go play. Very low key guy. He could get angry if, he, if you did something bad, but uh, we basically policed ourselves back then. But Dallas came in, and he got our attention real quick. There's no question about that. Is it true that Ozark told a reporter that there's plenty of time left when you guys were nine oh games yeah. out with eight to go? Yeah, it was. we were in Pittsburgh. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> really? We got plenty of time? Wait a minute. Do we have another month left or what? <laughs> both, both sitting there going, hey, what's up? <laughs> I'm going. How about, how about the 2007 team? They were seven games out with 17 to go. Oh, he yeah, caught the Mets. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's, 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 the the year, that's the year Jimmy said they were going to yeah. win, yeah. win, the, the, year. win yeah. the conference, the division. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Mets really collapsed. All right. So, uh, about the rest of pitching, relief pitching, 08 versus 80, 
you can't go against Lidge. I mean, right. 48 yeah. for 48 speaks for itself. Can yeah. We, yeah, let's just peel that open a little bit because I was surprised to see the type of year that Tugger had, man. Right. Uh, Lidge, and I know Fort Cassis, I get that, and mm-hmm. I'm with you on that, by the way. I was just surprised to see uh, that uh, Tugger that year, ERA, was 1.46. He was awesome. Over more innings than Lidge. Yep. Tugger threw 92 inning appearances. Well, that's, yeah, the other, yeah, that, okay. that's the other thing I was going to say. Damn screwball. He, he, there's a lot of times. Two innings, come back, another inning. Right. But it wasn't one inning and done. It, like it, like I it, didn't have – well, before we went to work at MLB Network, I had no idea. I, because I, the one inning save and all that, I had – 53 three plus innings saved. I believe that. Which is un, which is un, if, oh, you, did, if you did that now, the, they'd man, have to the shoot managers him. get fired, oh, the yeah. general manager get fired. If if you put this out to a lot of not analytics people, just sports fans. Yeah. And you said we're going to start off with the highlights of each guy. The one guy had what was it 44 or 40 saves. 48 48 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48. In, impeccable. Great. And then you went into the sub set of stats there and you compared it to McGraw and you got the whip whip's important it's a direct measurement whip you oh, know yeah. how, how they get whipped there's no getting mine around was like 1.5 I think and you said that Lidge was 1.226 and Tugger was 0.921 it's a big difference in whip oh yeah you know the pendulum's moving towards McGraw and I I'm, I'm all in on McGraw I was all in what kind of guy was he great guy Great guy. He uh, different. He found out though that he couldn't. Uh, the, the fact they they basically said every time he went to Wrigley, he'd get killed. It didn't matter who. He you know it was all day games, right. and he used to he liked to go out on Rush Street. There's right. no question about it. Right. And uh, so after a while, Danny, especially Danny Ozark and, and even Dallas, they said don't even bother bringing your glove. You're not pitching here. He couldn't pitch there. Wow. He never, I had he, to. He, I had to fight for him. He got about a, a two or three hours sleep every time we were there, and he just. Which he, is uh, that story is a common fiber to a lot of players that go back uh, in the, in the day. Is that better police now, Bo Mitch? Is, is that allowed? Or players do what they? No want? one wants to do it. I mean, These it, guys go back and play video games. Yeah, yeah because well, then everyone <laughs> everyone's got their phone. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't do nothing at a bar. I mean, it's oh yeah, you couldn't. I wouldn't right. want to. I wouldn't want to play with that. With that no. thing. Out. After a big win nowadays, they don't want to go have a beer out. And, you, you don't know, do that now. Don't do it now. And in, in all fairness to them, yeah. I wouldn't want to do it now either. Right. People, no. you can be yep. sitting. Right? Yep. Some girl can be sitting next to you, and the guy goes, hey. and then send it out. And the guy, yeah. The right. wife goes, "What are you doing?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, we but, didn't but go you know out ninety three anyway. We just went to the training room. Right. Right. I we stayed there until five in the morning. I got a question. Yeah. For How about you this guys? ERA though? The three four three. Yeah, yeah. I got a, Who had yep. the three four three? The whole team. Oh, that's, that's pretty that's, good. Yeah, I got a great. No, that's a way. I mean, just the, I think the pitching, uh, obviously with Carlton Dow, but my, my, uh, our bullpen. The family. sleeper is is Tugger. He has an off the charts. He has an un. Listen, Tucker, Ron Reed, and Brewster. Yeah, how, many, how many people are putting a one point uh, four something ERA with a whip like that, and and he has ninety something appearances? That just kind of goes unspoken. It's he had sort of ninety appearances that year. Innings, innings, yeah. How I mean, about during yeah, the season? Yeah, I mean that's how unbelievable. And how he about didn't have ninety appearances. There's no way. Innings pitched. Ninety two innings pitched. Ninety two innings pitched. How many appearances? Games. <laughs> Uh, 57. 57. 57. Yeah. Do you know how high that inning total is for that game total? Yeah. yeah. There is zero chance you will ever see that again. Yeah. No. But, no way. But remember how they were using Tugger. He pitched a lot of two-inning circumstances. Yep, so what, Mitch, look at Tug. Look at Goose. These guys, I mean, it was ridiculous. How about, if these uh, guys, go, how about going way back, Mike Marshall? Mike Marshall threw a 90-something game. No, he, he, he threw, threw BP every day. He threw 100 and some innings as a closer. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think that favors uh, I think that favors 80 versus 08. It's yeah, we, easier for me to come in now and I got to focus on three batters than maybe two innings, right? We we had we had a good 08 Lidge was not pitching more than uh, No, no, it was a strict thing. I mean, it was, it was a closer. Coach, what okay, did they start not, with the 100 pitch He threw count. 61 innings. When yeah. what? I think what year did they start with these hundred pitch counts? And, and I want to know the genius who came up with it. Yeah, I, I like that. Under, I don't understand that. Yeah. that. That bells and whistles go off as soon as you hit a hundred. Yeah, and oh, you can't get through a lineup three times. Come on, man. it's like he said. It's how you feel. 
You mean yeah. you you may be dead after fifty pitches you know if what? it's not I don't, your day? I don't, I don't blame these pitchers now because I guarantee if you ask every one of them, most of them, yeah, they're going to say I want to I want to pitch a complete. Their program now, Correct. you give us five. This is what you say. Give us five innings. We'll go right to the bullpen. Correct. You know what why, is five, are you kidding me? Well, Correct. the reason for that is they have that set of quality start. Ugh. Three runs or less That's and six innings. That's not a quality innings. start. That's a four and a half ERA. Right. That got you sent down yep. when we came up. Yep. A 4.5 ERA was horrible. Now it's considered the gold standard. Yep. Yeah, there's no more complete games. No. You don't, you don't get there will never be another 300-game winner for anyone out no, there. No, so. that will even, never happen I again. So. I don't even think you're going to see anybody throw 300 innings. No. Randy Johnson will be the last 300-game winner to play the game. Right. How about Marty Bystrom? Right. Yeah, Marty, Dickey, they all came they, up. 5-0 five, five oh, the last yeah. month. Yeah. So. Boy, Lurch had 14 losses in 80. Yep. I, so play, I played a couple years ago. Semi pro with him. He was so we're giving the pitching, uh, the hitting to 08 yeah. and, and the yeah. pitching. That, and that's a fair divide. Yeah. And then you get into the intangibles and right. the pinch hitters. Right. We don't have time to go in. Yeah, it was too good. Know. Put it this way it was two real good two teams. Two really good teams. Yep. I mean, you had a lot of guys. Ron, Ron Reed is an unsung hero for me in that, that whole season. I mean, uh, he pitched over 90 innings also. So Yeah. I mean, you, you got bullpen guys that are throwing over 90 innings. I yeah. threw 108 in 87, I think. And they just don't do it anymore. I pitch in 85 games. I just don't like where relievers come in and there's a question about whether or not they can go. If you can pull your pants on, you should be able to pitch. Right. Let's not That's forget. a mindset. It doesn't me, have anything to do let, with anything Let's else. not forget some of the guys off the bench, too, for the 80 team. Look, oh, at, the, look at the numbers for Lonnie Smith, Greg Gross. Oh, yeah. Uh, Keith uh, Worley, uh, Del Unser. Oh, we, we had a good uh, bench. Unser? I mean, Unser had some key yeah, hits. We I had mean, a real good bench. Great bench, you yeah. know. Yeah. And, uh, Matt Stairs, though, Matt man. Stairs, <laughs> Dobbs, Matt. Coast. Yeah, you had some guys here, too. Let me ask you this off the topic. Catcher. Boone. Okay. Let me throw in Darren Dalton. Dalton was a, a leader. Correct. Darren was a leader. His skills probably weren't as good as Booney. He Dutch hit a lot of home runs. Now. Oh, He's yeah. strong, but he was he was a true leader. He would uh, the only one I ever he, played he, with. He would. Uh, he told us he, a story. He would grab you by the neck. And, yeah. And hey, this isn't about you. It's about winning. You know. He really wanted to win. And, and people don't realize. How hurt he was a lot of things. His knees were terrible. He had ten, and ten he, knee surgeries, and he kept going back out there, back out there, back out there. Uh, he's the one that put Schilling in his place as soon as he came over here. Good. Schilling used to talk a lot of crap and everything. Right. He had one conversation with him, and that was him and uh, <laughs> Dave Hollins. They they sort of scared everybody in that. Yeah. Cup. <laughs> That's so. your buddy, right, Hollins? <laughs> oh God, he he. We were in Cincinnati one night. <laughs> Me and Larry Anderson, David West are up in the club hat. Clubhouse, the game's going to start in about 10 minutes. Well, Dave's up there. Well, he wasn't Dave at the time. He was Mikey at the time. Yeah, we called him Mikey. <laughs> so I told a joke, and David and Larry are laughing. I'm laughing. Head comes over, grabs me, and fires me into a locker. <laughs> I go wadded up in the bottom of this you're locker. Not, you're not the smallest guy to throw into a locker. No, yeah. and I, I stand up, and I look at Larry and Westy, and I said, you guys might have to come save me, but I'm fixing this. So I go over to him. Because he screamed, yell, uh, yelled at me, think about the game. Threw me in the locker. I get back up. I go get in his face. And I said, look, my game starts in two and a half hours. If I start thinking about my game right now, I'll be burned out by the time I get there. <laughs> it's a great story. So I'm sitting there waiting. Am I going to get punched? I'm looking at him. And he goes, you're right. Okay. I went, Whew. Walked, <laughs> I walked back over to David so, and Larry. So, so who wins the fight between Dutch and him? Headley and Dutch, oh, that would be ugly. That would be uh, body bag. Whoever whoever lost, the guy you'd have to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> right. well, that's a fact. <laughs> really, they're, they're both getting up. Really, Dutch uh, spoke. Our, I, I go ahead. I got no, a great you story. Gotta give us a Dutch. Story. We'll close on a Dutch. Story. The Marlins took him in for, 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 real quick, and he he spoke at our college too uh, the year before you came, and uh, he, had a he told house meeting. he told us a story about the Marlins. They brought him in. And, and they won Jim, the World Series. Strictly for his later yeah. right? Leland. Jim, Leland. Jim Leland told me that story. He, yeah. he didn't know any – I mean, he knew him by playing against him. Yeah. He walked in there, and they had some good players now. Yeah. And he aired them. He they said, were hey, young. We used to love playing against you guys. You guys don't don't want it. You know, I mean, he would go on and on. That's and good And these stuff. guys are probably going, 
who's this guy coming over from the Philly doing all this? Right. Yeah. Well, Leland said that was the greatest thing that ever happened to that team. They won the series. Yep. yep. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I can't remember what I was going to say. This it's brain Dalton, operation Dalton has story. me stuttering and everything else. Well, Dalton uh, story. You had a Dalton story for us. I can't remember. All right. You want to bring this puppy home for podcast number one? We'll take a break. Oh, we're going to take a break. Stay where you're at. we got another hour coming. This was fun. Thanks, Yeah, guys. it's going to be a good time. good time. Hang with I know. I could talk all day. We're going <laughs> to take a fun. break. We'll be <laughs> this back after a break. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you.